What is going on, guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Batania. And today, we're going to be setting up some automated ore generation using the Orchid. So last episode, we set up the infinite mana generation tree farm, which is right over here. It's been running flawlessly since last episode, generating tons of mana, which is great because it means we finally have some excess mana to play around with. And one of the most useful things that I think you can do with that excess mana is generate infinite it or because that saves you a ton of time you no longer really have to worry about going mining and trying to get some resources to make stuff with so of course that's what I want to do because I want to be lazy and stay at my base and with Batania, it is very easy to automate the production of ore at the expense of mana using the orchid it's going to generate one ore every five seconds assuming it has stone in its area and it's going to expend 1.75 percent of a mana pool or for an exact number 17,500 mana so all things considered really not that bad and again it's an extremely easy setup to automate as for the requirements for today's episode you can see them in this chest right here you can feel free to pause the video if you want to make sure you have everything needed to follow along today but we should be good to grab all this stuff out and do some crafting So now all the crafting for today's episode should be done. We should be good to set this up. And it was a lot faster than previous episodes because if we take a look at my inventory right now, there's actually not that much in here that we need to make this setup. Because like I said earlier, it is very simple to do. Really the hard part about this is gonna be supplying it with sufficient mana to actually keep it running. So investing a little bit more time and effort into your mana generation setups is probably gonna yield better results with this than trying to overcomplicate this in some way to make it more efficient so to start out we're going to grab out a chest and a hopper and I will say that the chest is not going to be the center of this setup the hopper is so when you're trying to decide where to put this down the hopper is where you probably want to base the center of this entire thing off of so we're going to put the chest down and then we're going to put a hopper directly next to it pushing into that and then we're going to grab out our diluted mana pool and we're going to put that down directly on top of the hopper and this mana pool is never going to get mana in it it's got a totally different purpose here that we'll be going over in a little bit the next thing we're going to want to do is grab out our glass and then just some miscellaneous block to build with that we can break and then we are going to come up and one level above where this diluted mana pool is, we're going to put down glass, completely encasing the center block above the mana pool. So it'll just be like a little bit of a glass tunnel leading down to the mana pool right there. And then we can clear these out. And this is basically going to just funnel the items down right into this mana pool. The next step is going to be just pillaring up here to get on top of the glass. And then we're going to grab out our pulse mana spreader. We're gonna put it down right here and it's already facing in the direction it needs to be. But if it's not, then you can just adjust it with your wand of the forest to be firing across the glass to the other side like that. Then we're gonna grab out our mana lens of weight and we're gonna put it onto the mana spreader. So if you don't know what this lens does, it's actually really cool. Whenever a pulse with this mana lens gets fired off, whatever the first block is that it hits, which in this case is gonna be stone, that forms right in front of it, it's going to treat it like sand or gravel, and that block is gonna fall. And so the way that this setup works and how we auto harvest and essentially silk touch every ore that forms in this setup for very little mana is going to be the stone forms right in front of this mana spreader, 
gets turned into ore. Once it's turned into ore, this pulse mana spreader with the weight lens will fire off. That ore is then going to act like sand or gravel and drop down. And when it hits this diluted mana pool, it's going to turn from a regular block in the world into an entity. And then it'll get picked up by this hopper and put in this chest. And again, it's basically going to be silk touched. So for things like diamonds or redstone, where you're not really getting that many of them, being able to place those down after and fortune them or ore process them or whatever you want to do with them is definitely extremely beneficial and it's not going to take ton more mana to actually get that. So definitely a very cool method of harvesting this instead of just doing something like boring through them, in which case you also need to worry that it's going to go through multiple blocks. This one just going to hit one block and then it's done. Now that we have the pulse mana spreader set up, the next step is going to be grabbing out the orchid in the mana pool. We're going to put down the floating orchid right here on top of this glass. And then we are going to put down our mana pool directly between the pulse mana spreader and the orchid. And then we're just going to make sure that the orchid is in fact bound to this mana pool and not this diluted one down here, as this mana pool right here is going to basically be the input mana pool that's going to give mana to both the orchid and to the pulse mana spreader. This one down here, like I said, is never going to have mana in it. Its sole purpose is to break the ore that's going to be falling down there so it can get picked up by the hopper. Once we have all this set up, the next thing is pretty much to set up the smooth stone generator that's going to put the smooth stone right in front of the mana spreader that the orchid can then transform into whatever ore it's going to go with. So we're just going to grab out some of our glass, we're going to grab out our water, and we're just going to encase the water right here so we can build off of this and we can just grab out a regular living rock brick so that we have at least one block to work around with. So. It'll go right there, and then we're just going to put down some glass right there so it doesn't totally spill out, and we should be good to fill this in. Now, obviously, it is going to go down here right at the start. That's why we have the glass there, but we should be good to put glass down now on top of the orchid, pulse mana spreader, this glass right here, and then finally, we're going to have to put a block down right in the center there just so that we can put this one down, we can break this, and finally, we should be good to put the lava down right here and the smooth stone should generate. So there we go. And the generic setup is done. We now have the smooth stone that will be generated. We have the orchid that'll transform it, the input mana pool, the mana spreader that's gonna break it, the breaking setup and the collection setup. All we really need to do now is get the timing done. So we're actually gonna be using two different redstone components to make the timer for this setup. The first one we're gonna start out with is the very basic hovering hourglass timer. And we're going to put the hovering hourglass down directly next to this pulse mana spreader because this is the only thing that we care about getting a signal from this and we're going to put 10 sand in there now you can do 10 regular sand you can do one red sand doesn't matter you can also adjust the amount of sand you're putting in there i would say 10 is a little bit on the high end if you want to be safe nine is okay eight is going to get you a little bit faster i would not go lower than seven the reason being the orchid is going to look every five seconds to transform one block of stone in its area into an ore so you're going to have at least five seconds that you want to wait before you fire this thing off again but then you also need to take into account the fact that you need a little bit of time for the smooth stone to form you also are going to have time where the smooth stone that's transformed into the ore then needs to fall once the weighted mana lens pulse hits it before the water and lava can even move into its place. And on top of that, you also do have a little bit of a delay between the pulse mana spreader getting the redstone signal, firing the pulse, and it hitting this block. So I would say roughly seven to eight seconds is going to be the fastest you want to go. If you go at seven seconds or any lower than that, you're going to start getting periods where smooth stone is going to be collected instead of ore because there's not going to be enough time between the smooth stone forming and the pulse mana spreader firing off for the orchid to actually change it from smooth stone into ore. So again, you can adjust it yourself to whatever you want, but I really don't think there's that much of a benefit in making it go fast because you're going to be expending that if you make it seven seconds, almost 2% of a mana pool every seven seconds. So unless you're supplying that much mana consistently, the timing doesn't really matter. And it's more about if you're able to actually even supply the mana for an extended period of time. So again, Overall, my recommendation, 10 seconds, you will never run into issues, and you will all be set.
Now that we have that general timer set up for this, the last redstone component we need to do is going to be the off switch for this thing. And it's going to automatically turn off if it does not have sufficient mana to have the orchid transform the smooth stone into ore and then the pulse mana spreader to drop it down. And really what's going to happen here is eventually your orchid is not going to have a full internal mana buffer. So as you can see, it does obviously have an internal mana buffer, just like every functional flora. And then you also have an internal mana buffer on the pulse mana spreader. So eventually this mana pool is going to empty out. There'll be some mana in here, some in here, and the orchid is no longer going to be able to turn the stone into ore. But the pulse mana spreader is going to have plenty of mana to keep firing off repeatedly and you're going to be generating smooth stone and wasting a little bit of mana. So if you really don't want to generate smooth stone and you don't want to waste any mana, much like myself, putting this little redstone setup on here will prevent that from happening. So if you want to avoid that, all we're going to do is build up a little bit so that we can work from above here. We're going to put down a block below this mana pool, another block off of that, and then we're going to build two blocks here, one up from that. So we're going to put a comparator going into this block right here from the mana pool. And for those of you that do not know, the mana pools do output a comparator signal with the strength depending on how full they are. Now we're going to be setting up a redstone on top of both of these blocks right here. And then finally putting down a redstone torch right here. And the way this whole thing is going to work is essentially this redstone torch is going to override the hovering hourglass signal whenever it's on, mainly because the pulse mana spreader functions where it's going to get a redstone signal, it's going to then fire off. But until that redstone signal goes away, no other redstone signal coming in is going to cause it to pulse. It won't be able to reset if this is still on. So this is going to stay on unless there is a two strength signal coming from this comparator, which is only going to happen when this mana pool is roughly 10% full. I'm not sure the exact percent, but roughly 10%. And as long as there is some mana in this mana pool, that means that the orchid has a full internal buffer and is good to transform this stone into ore. But what's going to happen when the process stops is basically this orchid is going to turn this stone into ore. This is going to drop to an amount that is less than, let's say, the 10% roughly that this will have a signal strength of two at. This comparator then is going to drop the signal strength to one. This torch is going to turn back on. That hovering hourglass is probably going to be about three seconds away from flipping over. But this pulse mana spreader is going to fire off anyway due to the new signal from the torch. It's going to take whatever ore was just made, drop it down. New smooth stone will form. The orchid will make one more ore. But now the hovering hourglass will no longer actually be able to give input to the pulse mana spreader because this torch is going to consistently be on until we give more mana to this setup. And that's extremely useful, especially if you are manually transferring mana in like I am, because you're not trying to waste all of your excess mana on this, especially if you're not in critical need of ores at that moment. So that's pretty much it for the setup. That's how everything works. And I guess if we actually want to try it out now, we should be good to dump some mana in here from my mana tablet and let this thing run. So moment of truth to see if this works. Let's just dump the mana tablet on there. We can see the comparator kicks on as mana goes in here. We have mana filling up the internal buffer and this thing is loud. I will tell you guys, it is very, very loud. So <laughs> going to be a little bit rough, but let's see how much mana we have in here. That's sufficient for it to fire off at least a couple times. It's going to totally drain my mana tablet, but we should be good to grab this back. It's basically empty, but we can watch as this thing functions. We can watch the timing on it and you'll see that the ores are weighted, obviously. So we're going to get a lot of coal and a lot of iron, but we can see that we are generating ore. We do have our living rock in there from when we were doing work around here earlier, but we have some coal and even some redstone. So we can watch as this fires off and eventually we will see when that kicks back on. Oh, we got some gold. That's actually another very rare one. I wonder if we'll get any diamond while we watch here, but we should run through pretty much all the mana we supplied this with pretty quickly. We can watch and you can actually see the amount it takes per operation in here because it takes so much. So we'll be able to see this. Yup, it goes down. Obviously, it's not a ton of mana from the mana pool, 
you're expending like half of this to make one thing of Terra Steel. So in comparison to that, it's really not that bad, but it is super weird being able to see such a large visual drop for a single piece of ore if you're not really generating that much mana. So we should be probably about three or four operations away from the redstone torch kicking back on because this thing goes sub 10% mana left in the mana pool. And when that happens, we'll be able to verify that our sort of stop or automatic stop due to the mana supply in the system does in fact work. And then we should be good to call it for the day because that's pretty much the setup. It's very simple. There's no need to make more than a single smooth stone generator. As long as you're having this break it every pretty much five to 10 seconds, and then you're not really wasting any downtime on this and it's pretty compact and cheap to do, which I think is great. I think this is a super useful setup to do early on if you have obviously access to the pixie dust, I believe, which was used for making the orchid and some of the prismarine that you need to get for me. Oh, we got diamond. I was going to say the prismarine for the weighted mana lens, but wow. And emerald. Those are both like the two rarest ores that you can get. I'm actually really surprised we got some of those, but we can see that the torch also kicked back on. So the hovering hourglass is no longer going to cause the pulse mana spreader to fire. And yeah, you can see it's about 10%, maybe a little bit less in the mana pool. And that is the automated ore generation setup, guys. You can see the amount of ore we got here for roughly... I would say, you know, three quarters ish of a mana tablet expended since there's still some left here in this mana pool, maybe a little bit less than three quarters, but I think that's going to be it for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed today's setup and hopefully you find it useful. If you did, be sure to subscribe so you never miss out on a future episode as they come out every Monday and Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I will talk to you guys later.